Hello everyone, welcome back to The Budget Sportsman. Thank you so much for joining me on today's video. Today, I wanna to share with you some of the highlight moments of my recent elk hunting trip to Colorado. Now, I'm gonna give a huge disclaimer up here at the beginning because I know everybody wants to see a hunting video with a kill shot in it, and that just did not happen on this trip. In fact, the only elk that I personally saw on this entire trip was standing next to the highway just outside of Denver as we were heading out to our hunting unit. There were certainly elk in the area we hunted, we just were not at the right place at the right time uh, to be successful. However, this was a, a huge trip for me, something I have looked forward to and planned and dreamed of for a very, very long time. And so I don't just want to gloss over it and ignore it just because I didn't have the traditional sense of success. So before I get into the highlight moments, I wanted to give you uh, the sort of a, a really brief background of this trip. This trip was something that my dad had gifted to myself and my two brothers-in-law. Uh, and so my dad and the three of us were all going to be hunting and then my one nephew was going along just to film and be a part of the experience, but he did not have a tag. However, about a year and a half ago, I believe it was, maybe almost two years ago now, my dad was diagnosed with cancer. And he's currently undergoing some treatments that really are taking out his energy and his strength. So this whole trip was, was about family. And so as a result of that, we weren't able to do some of the, the kinds of hunting or get the distance from the trailhead that some other people would or that maybe we should have for success because this was all about family. Now, in addition to dad gifting us the trip, uh, us kids wanted to get together and kind of honor dad uh, with the trip as well. And so we made these next generation hoodies and next generation hats that I'm wearing now. And the whole trip was about uh, kind of family and honoring dad for the legacy and the heritage that he's passed down to us. And so that's what the trip was about. So that will kind of give some context to some of the things and the decisions we made about how to hunt on this trip. So let's dive in. So we arrived on a Tuesday and got camp set up and boy, right away we discovered there was gonna be a lot more hunting pressure than what we anticipated. This was public land, do it yourself, a hunt in an over-the-counter unit. So a lot of hunting pressure. We did find a nice place to camp. Got everything set up and we decided to go out for a little evening hike right behind our campsite, which was right by essentially a trail. On that first evening hunt, we all kind of discovered how weak that actually was and how steep and difficult the terrain actually was going to be. And that night, Dad, not wanting to hold any of us back, said, listen, I'm just not gonna hunt as much as I thought I was, so tomorrow you guys just go out and you have a hunt and I'm gonna stay here at camp. Now that was something we all struggled with, um, but Dad was, was emphatic that he felt like it was the best thing. So Wednesday was our first full day of hunting and we got up and it was raining. Now what are you gonna do when you've been planning a hunt for three years, you've been looking forward to it, sit in camp? No, you're gonna get out there and you're gonna do it. And so we got out there in the rain. It wasn't raining hard, but enough that after a while we got wet. We got into some thick brush under the aspen, and we got pretty soaked. And for a little bit there, I was, to be honest with you, not having fun. We were joking a lot about the type two fun. Late in the afternoon, the sun came out, and we did have uh, a much nicer weather, and the, the spirits were boosted quite a bit. But the highlight for me of Wednesday was actually the stars at night. Everything cleared off, and we had some just beautiful, amazing stars. Far from town, beautiful Milky Way and that was definitely a highlight of Wednesday. Thursday, we ended up actually driving quite a distance away and trying a different area. And the reason we did this is so that dad could be a part of the hunt. We found a trail that looked like it was relatively mild in its terrain, just some sort of mild up and downs. And we figured dad would be able to manage that. So we did, and dad thoroughly enjoyed himself, as did all of us. We were hiking through beautiful aspens. We had beautiful views of the mountains and it was just absolutely gorgeous. And then probably the highlight of Thursday was uh, at the end of that hike, or well, I guess the middle of the hike, as we got about two, two and a half miles in the trail, uh, we came to a beautiful mountain lake and we sat there and we had our lunch and dad was just enjoying himself, which really helped me seeing him enjoying himself. And so we sat there and then a, a short little storm blew through, just drizzled a little bit and then passed over. Once that storm passed over, we looked across these valleys to the next mountain range and there was actually snow on the top of the mountains. It was just really cool to see. We're in the middle of September and seeing that dusting of snow that had blown through on top of the mountains.
Now on Friday, we decided to go back up kind of the same area we were on Wednesday. We had seen some sign. We had started to feel like we were getting just into a little bit of fresh sign. So we decided to try to get up into that same area and see if we could find more fresh sign. Now for me, the highlight of Friday was probably watching a couple of mule deer. As we were coming up through this draw, uh, somebody noticed, uh, I think it was probably about four or so mule deer up, probably 80, 90 yards, I don't know. And we were able to watch them and film them. They were looking at us, but they didn't seem too terribly concerned. And then eventually they worked their way off in the same direction that we were going to go. So we worked up and we worked kind of over a little edge and then around the corner. And when we got up there, we sat down to have some snacks and looked across the, the valley there. And about 130 yards away, uh, those mule deer were still there. So it was really neat just to sit there and eat our snacks and watch them. They were not concerned about us. Don't even know they even realized we were there. But there's a little buck there. Got to watch him bend down uh, through the binoculars, watch him stand up and go around. It was just really a cool experience. We did find uh, a little bit of fresh shine, but still not very much. We did find a couple of watering holes, which is cool to see different tracks of different animals coming in. And then the other cool thing is we found the kill site of somebody who had killed a bull earlier in the season. It was fresh enough that it was certainly this season, and it was a bull because there's a skull there, and you can see where the skull cap had been cut off. Somebody had taken the antlers with them, uh, but not the whole skull. And uh, it was neat to see bear tracks there and different predators that had come in to clean up the remains as well. So that was kind of a cool highlight to know that at least earlier in the season there had been elk there, but it certainly from all the signs it appeared that the elk had been pushed further in. Now Friday night we decided to go to uh, a trailhead that we had, uh, we had been camped near, but we had not actually taken that trail. And we decided all of us, including Dad, were gonna go out this trail. Well, a couple of things happened on Friday night. First of all, the views were amazing. Uh, just uh, took some absolutely amazing photos. But there's also a little stream there and I got to do some trout fishing and caught my first trout of the trip. And to me it was picture perfect. Well guys, I didn't catch anything this afternoon but we came out for a walk this evening and I finally caught my first Colorado trout. Oh, and he gone. <laughs> I hope you got to see him a little bit. I was probably holding him out too far. First Colorado trout, yes. But the other thing is we really started talking to people on that trail who were coming out for the evening. It really started hearing a lot about how deep they were going and how high of elevation they were going. And it really started kind of getting the wheels turning for us about what maybe we needed to do to get into elk or find some success. But we were also trying to work within the realms of wanting to be with dad and keep everybody together uh, so that we were having that family hunt that we were looking for. So that night we made a plan that the next day we were gonna head out that same trailhead, dad was gonna go along. And my one brother-in-law and my nephew and dad were gonna go as far as they could and just find a place to get off the trail, do a little calling and do a little hunting. And then my other brother-in-law and myself, we were gonna do a big, huge loop. We thought it was gonna be 10 miles. It turned out to be a 12 mile loop. And to me, this was probably a highlight of the trip for me because it had a backpacking style feel to it. I love backpacking, but it had that feel to it just with the amount of, of miles that we covered. But it was also a Saturday, and we met a lot of hunters on this day. There was a lot of hunting pressure, but it actually, again, a lot of folks were open, a lot of folks were talking, and um, it really helped us, again, to, to learn some things about how we might be successful. Now, the real highlight of Saturday for me was at lunchtime, we got up to a relatively high elevation, and we had an amazing, amazing view. It wasn't quite 360 degrees, but I'd say like 270 degrees around. We're just seeing these amazing views, mountain after mountain after mountain, and valleys, just gorgeous. We sat up there, we ate lunch, uh, we, we climbed up a little higher to get actually a little bit better view, where we got the, the 270 degree view, took some photos, and to me that was probably a highlight. But there's also just this huge sense of accomplishment with the amount of miles we covered that day and the things that we learned and the things that we saw. Sunday we decided to uh, take a rest day. All of us are believers and Christians and uh, we made a decision as a group that we were going to go be in church on Sunday morning. So we drove uh, quite a distance um, into town and found a church, had a great church service, enjoyed the fellowship and the worship with the other believers. But then uh, after lunch we went and ate some hamburgers, had some milkshakes and had a good time as a family. But all during the morning we were kind of having a discussion, okay what do we need to do with our remaining days to hunt. Our plan was to be able to have Monday and Tuesday to hunt and drive home Wednesday, pack up and start driving home Wednesday. But they were calling for 
huge amounts of rain on Wednesday, and we did not want to pack up all of our tents and all of our gear in, a, in a just a torrential downpour. So what we decided was that on Sunday night when we got back to camp, we were going to pack up what we could to make a backpacking hunt out of this thing. And Dad was not going to be able to go, it was just going to be out of his ability. And my nephew, uh, it was decided that my nephew would stay with Dad. But the other three of us, we were going to backpack in to try to get some more distance in and get in some areas that we had not been before. We ended up uh, hiking in, it was kind of late in the afternoon by the time we got started. We ended up hiking in about five miles, camped at a little meadow. And that was a highlight for me. Again, the stars are beautiful. I love camping. Um, I love backpacking. And so it was just kind of a neat experience to be able to pack in that way. We didn't have all the best gear. Some of the guys were carrying big, heavy sleeping bags strapped to their backpacks and everything. But it was a really cool experience. That night, I was sleeping, sound asleep. But my one brother-in-law did hear a couple of bugles in the middle of the night, so that was encouraging. We got up in the morning and started hiking up a hill, and we got, again, just this amazing, gorgeous view with the sunrise. And then shortly after that, we started hearing a bull bugling. So we made our way. He was above us in elevation. We tried to get up to him, and it just seemed like with the, the day warming up, he stopped bugling before we could get close enough to really pinpoint his location. Now, one of the highlights of Monday for me was we got up to almost 10,000 feet elevation, just shy of 10,000 feet. And at this particular mountain that we were on, that was kind of almost like the tree line. From there, it went up into like just the rock pile. And we got almost up that high, and there was a, just a mountain stream there where we stopped to filter water, get a drink, and refill our water bladders. To me, that was a highlight. It was something, that water was so cold, it gave me a brain freeze. It was just, I don't know, it was just something really neat about filtering water from a high mountain stream. The, the flavor, the taste, the coldness, the refreshingness of that creek was amazing. Now in the afternoon we stopped and just kind of rested for a while and we decided that we were going to have to make our way all the way back not to our spike camp but to our base camp that night so that we could pack up on Tuesday before the rain came on Wednesday. So I actually left the other guys a little bit early and went back to our spike camp to get everything packed up and then I also did a little bit of trout fishing, caught a few more trout. Um, while they, those guys were coming back down a few hours later, they did actually see a cow elk. I was disappointed that I missed it. They were about 80 yards away, couldn't get a shot. They probably would have taken a shot at a cow had they been given the opportunity, but they just weren't given the opportunity. So we ended up hiking all the way out that night to our base camp, making another 12 or 13 mile day. Again, a very enjoyable day. Tuesday morning, we ended up just packing up and heading out and starting the drive home. Uh, we did do a little fishing on the way home as well, just to break up the trip a little bit uh, since we did have that Colorado fishing license. So in your mind, you may be thinking this was a failed trip. And in a lot of senses it was in the fact that we really didn't see elk and we didn't get any elk, but it wasn't a failed trip uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one is we accomplished the main purpose, which was having great family time, great family fellowship and making memories together. But it also wasn't a failed trip in the sense that we really learned in those last couple of days what was necessary on a trip of this style to even have a chance. And that would be uh, to not hunt from the base camp, to have a backpacking style camp where you can be mobile and move. Now in the future, I'm probably gonna make another video about the lessons learned and I'll go into some of these things in more detail about what we learned. But let's, for now, let me just say, it wasn't a failure in that we learned some great lessons. And I would also encourage you, yes, I know that an out of state trip can be expensive, but if it's, some, if it's something that you can save up for and it's something that you can afford, I would make it a priority to do it. We saw the most amazing views and had the most amazing time, and it could be tempting to feel like, boy, that was a waste of money because we didn't get an elk. But that's just simply not true because of the memories made, the views we experienced, and the time that we got to enjoy in God's beautiful creation. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's not a kill shot. I know I've apologized for it for a few times, but I just wanted to share the amazing experiences that we did get to enjoy in Colorado and encourage you to take advantage of the experiences that might be coming your way. So until next time, remember to get off YouTube and get outdoors into God's great creation.